But I think as we get better at wellness, and you know how much I hate that word, but like, um, or living consciously or putting all of the things into place, we get better at not being so attached to the shitty feelings and knowing that, okay, I'm feeling like a crap, but now, so let me put these couple things into place and get myself back to feeling better. I feel like, but it's inevitable that it's that, that, that constant back and forth going. This and I think nobody really said that. No. So you're like, I have a wellness failure. No. Yeah. <laughs> Madness. No, this is huge. Just up front, like this expectation, like let's like pull the curtain up. There is no, <laughs> I have arrived. There is no, no, I've arrived. no, no, no. Help me see is a podcast that redefines the word vision through vulnerable and real conversations my own private introspective ramblings about the things that I think about in the wee hours of the morning and my deep core belief that your nothingness is your everything and all you have to do is see. I'm Bianca Mora. I'm your host. I am an educator, a photographic artist, and I believe that your daily photo habit can be the key to unlocking the ability to be more present in your everyday life and live deeper into your intention and purpose. We're not about the small talk here. Grab your coffee, get cozy, and let's talk. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Help Me See. I got sick again. I have been out of quarantine for a week and a half, and then I got hit like really hit with, I think the flu. I don't know. I didn't even have the energy to go, um, find out for sure, but I've been completely laid up. I actually felt worse this time than last time. And it's really interesting to me. (laughs) It was really interesting to experience this and feel like what is happening. Last time when I had COVID for the first time, just the other week, I had said to myself, you know what, this is like an odd blessing because I had come back from a retreat where I did a lot of soul searching and I felt like the COVID really forced me to commit almost (laughs) to my, to my findings. And then I kind of feel like I don't, I'm not really trying to get all woo woo, but at the same time, I know a virus is a virus and it's flu season and, you know, there's all that. And I have a kid in daycare and that happens. But I almost feel like the fact that once I recovered or felt better human from COVID, I just immediately started to try to do, do, do again, try to like catch up and catch up. And then I got knocked on my ass again. And I kind of feel like it's okay. I got it. Noted. (laughs) Noted. I think in this season and as I end this year and welcome another year, I, I think I need to move differently and give myself more grace, um, just as a, as a normal life, full-time situation, not give myself grace when it's really, um, busy or tough or when I'm not feeling well, but give myself grace all the time and not deplete myself to the point where this is what happens. Uh, can any of you feel, feel that? (laughs) Do you, (laughs) Do you feel like there's a nugget in there meant for you? Like, what if we put our self-care in the front and not behind a huge task, like as a reward, but rather as a way of being so we don't set ourselves up for needing it so urgently? (sighs) Feels a lot more sustainable to me. That is something my coach Haley Carr speaks about a lot. It is, you know, front loading, front loading the things that feel so good for you so that you can work from a place of 
already feeling fulfilled instead of working yourself ragged and then rewarding yourself and then getting back on it again. And I really, really, really love that teaching. Anyway, so I'm actually, today on the show, we have, this is my conversation with my friend Jenny from last week, and it's really good. I love her so much. Jenny calls herself the bad yoga teacher. And she is just, she is the person that you probably want to learn wellness from because she hates the word wellness and she, <laughs> she <laughs> hilarious. And I just love her to pieces. And she has this gorgeous, real, authentic, and genuine way of wanting to help people feel better now. Like, not, okay, let's roll up our sleeves and do this huge, big, deep work that seems really scary and overwhelming. And who knows what we're going to find. And we need to just take our time. Like she's really committed to getting people to move and feel good in the now in a very sustainable and doable way. And, um, we're talking about this new product she's launching, um, lessons from a bad yoga teacher. She's working on a book. She's just an incredible human being that I feel so lucky to have met in the last couple of years of my life. And I know that you're going to enjoy this conversation. I had so much fun. Something that is so, so helpful in the way that Jenny talks uh, in this episode is she refers to this, her definition of happiness is, she talks about it being the ability to, to know that you can get yourself back to feeling good no matter what, because obviously life is going to throw a lot of stuff at us. And it's not, there's, there's no one size fits all. There's no, oh, I've solved this and I'm invincible. But there is this feeling that you can have of invincibility around knowing that no matter what, even if X, Y, Z, I know that there are things that I can do to, to connect to myself in a way that feels good and that it can get me out of this out of this slump and out of this heaviness, um, bit by bit by bit. And we have this really powerful conversation around that. And I really, 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 really think it will be helpful and useful. Uh, just on a personal note, I have found that I find myself on a pendulum very often, this pendulum of like far left and then far right in that. Okay. I'm, feeling so good. And I don't give a F what else is happening. This is what I'm doing. Horse blinders, whatever. And then all of a sudden I'll be on the other side of the pendulum. One day I wake up and I'm like, everything's crap. Just everything is just terrible. I am terrible. What I'm creating is terrible. (laughs) I just, I don't understand it. I don't understand how I can feel like that, but I, what Jenny's talking about is this ability to like, know that you won't always be able to avoid those pendulum swings, but you can experience them and also hold this truth and a knowing ability of being able to pull yourself out of it quicker and not be slumped into it for so long. Um, Our subconscious and our nervous systems are running the show (laughs) so much. And I think that when we're able to look at our feelings a little bit more objectively, as hard as that can sound, it can feel less daunting. Like I think about how I can have those feelings about my work when I'm in an area where I have the opportunity to overthink. But when I am in my work, like when I'm in a session, when I have my camera in my hands, when I'm witnessing someone, everything feels perfect, no matter what. It's crazy. Like it, it, it is like another worldly experience for me. Like I, I am in my happy place. Time doesn't exist. Two hours feels like 10 minutes, maybe. Um, it is, it, I mean, I like fall in love with the people that are in front of me. I feel like I see them on so many different levels. Uh, Sometimes I even (laughs) feel like I don't, (laughs) I'm like, have I, have I been talking? Have I even said anything? I don't even know. I just get lost in another world and it's so powerful and beautiful. And there's no, 
you know, the ego is really what makes us question ourselves and feel insecure about our work and, you know, worry about what other people think or what they're not thinking or you know whatever. But when you're in a state of true flow and you're in something that feels so right, there is no space for, for that crap, right? It's, it's when we're not in those, in those situations where we're in our highest state and in our flow and feeling our best and feel like we have the answers to the universe that we can really get drugged, drugged down into overthinking and, and getting a little bit lost. And what Jenny is offering is her perspectives on how to feel your feelings, but also be able to get on with living your life in a day-to-day way. And And I don't think a lot of people talk about it the way she talks about it. So I really look forward to having you hear what she has to say. Uh, I apologize in advance for my nasally sounding voice. And if you end up watching the YouTube video, you will see I'm holding a tissue in my hand the whole time. I don't understand why I didn't just put the tissue down. Like All of the clips. I'm like, I'm holding a tissue. It's disgusting. Um... So I have that for you. That's a huge treat. Um, So go ahead at the end of the show. If you want to learn more about Jenny, check out the show notes and um, you'll find her links there. But before that, I happened upon an audio clip that I took putting my son to bed and it is so precious. And I, I wanted to put it in here as a reminder to all of us of how like these sweet nothing conversations that are so, so deeply meaningful in our lives. There are ways that we can save them that don't feel intrusive. And for me, that is going to my voice memos and hitting record and putting my phone down on the pillow and just snuggling with my son and recording his little, little voice saying the sweetest things to me. Um, you know, I, it's a different time now. We have different capabilities. I don't have stuff like that from when I was that age, you know, and I think that I just wanted to show an example of something that I do in my everyday life in an effort to keep these little magical moments, uh, that feels very easy and effortless and exponentially powerful. So Also, I will probably send this clip to my son. I made an email address for both of my kids and every once in a while, I'll email them some pictures or I'll I'll send them a note or something like that. And um, so when they're old enough, they'll get to have that and have all these old emails from from me and probably only me and their grandma, my mom, (laughs) that emails them. I don't think that their dad has emailed them once yet, but... It is a really cute idea. So I just wanted to throw that in there. So I am going to put this sweet little clip of my son going to bed. He's uh he's four. And uh and then after that, you'll hear from Jenny about all of the ways in which we can feel better in our lives and really have the have the muscle to be able to get back to feeling better quicker instead of finding ourselves stuck in the sludges of feeling like shit. What's wrong, Mom? Nothing. I love you very so much. Um, I love you so much, Cassie. I love you very much, Cassie. <laughs> you make my heart so happy. And you. <laughs> I'm so happy. My heart is so happy. Me too. I'm so happy. <laughs> I love you bigger than a volcano. I love you bigger than a volcano.
I love you bigger than a universe. No, I am a bigger than a T-Rex. I love you bigger than a Mosasaurus. No, you're not bigger than a Mosasaurus. <laughs> I love you T-Rex. <laughs> okay, T-Rex wins. <laughs> Me too. I, I am a bigger than a T-Rex. I love you so much, buddy. Sure. Me too. Mm. Okay. Good night. Sweet dreams. Tommy. All right. So you either thought that was painfully boring or were near tears. I <laughs> I'm a little bit biased. I was near tears, but I get like that listening to complete strangers talk to their kids. So I don't know. Maybe I'm different. But if this clip uh touched her heart. It, you might want to go and download my free resource, See Nostalgia Now. Um, it's my tried and true PDF of just beautiful, easy, real life, no frills ways to save really precious memories. And when you sign up for the freebie, you get the download and then you also will be on my mailing list where I share um just more info, uh, background about the podcast episodes and also special offerings coming up. And speaking of special offerings coming up, if you are a photographic artist, an intentional photographer, uh, someone that loves to make meaning with their images and feels like, uh, there's just so much more that they want to be saying with their work than your bigger picture is a wait list that you're going to want to get on. It is my upcoming program for visionary photographic artists to create with freedom, purpose, and intention. Um, it will be coming out in the new year. And if you want to learn more about it and stay updated on when it is available, then, and also I will be having a free workshop before it launches. So regardless, if you want to participate in any of the upcoming uh, activities around this celebration of this new launch, then get on the wait list for that as well. Okay. Enjoy Jenny. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Help Me See. Today we have my beloved Jenny Sanchez. Um, I met Jenny, what now, a year ago or two years ago? I don't even know. Yeah. I can't believe we've never even hung out in person before. Uh, <laughs> Jenny is someone that you want to know <laughs> and she is the perfect person to talk to about what I want to talk to today about today and it's this idea of when we're doing all the things that we think we should be doing so that we can feel a certain way you know it's like if you know doing the things to help yourself and you're still not there. You're still not feeling the way you want to fucking feel. My favorite example is what that she gave. And it stuck with me is like when you leave yoga class and you just like zend yourself out and then you're in traffic and you're cursing at everyone on the road. Like, <laughs> why can't I bring that there? Why do I leave my, you know, all of the progress I make on the mat? So today we're just going to talk a little bit about that, why that is. And you know, a little bit about Jenny's story. So Jenny, welcome. Thank you for coming on today. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> you know, and I just, just even when you just said that, I, I, I don't think we ever don't like, I don't think that ping pong match, ping pong match ever stops. I just think we get better at redirecting ourselves back to feeling good, like as much as we possibly can, but I don't think it ever stops. And I think that's where like, wellness and all these theories people get so frustrated because they're like why do I still feel shitty and because you're gonna feel like that but once you like because it's inevitable because you're a living you're having a human experience and you know it's that's it but I think as we get better at wellness and you know how much I hate that word but like of, yeah. or living consciously or putting all of the things into place we get better at not being so attached to the shitty feelings and knowing that, okay, I'm feeling like crap, but now, so let me put these couple things into place and get myself back to feeling better. I feel like, but it's inevitable that it's that, that, that constant back and forth can keep going. This and I think nobody 
actually said that. No. So you're like, I have a wellness failure. No. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Madness. No, this is huge. Just upfront, like this expectation, like let's like pull the curtain up. There is no, I have arrived. There is no, no, I have arrived. no, 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 no. I, I mean, maybe life would be boring if we arrived. Maybe it would be like, well, now, but it's maybe no, that's the it. Point? What would be the yeah. point? I don't know. I mean, I feel like it would be great. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently that's not what we're here to do. So. <laughs> well, you, this is not some, you know, new re- revelation for you because you have, have based like your, your business and like everything that you've created to help others in the world off of this foundation of, uh, what do you call yourself? A bad yoga teacher. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> tell, tell us, just tell us more about it. Yeah, well, I, I I had a business pain thing and I met a girl in doing a very big job. And we, you know, when you just like meet someone, you're like, sort of like you and I, where you're like, yes, this yeah. is a human that I will stay forever friends with. Wait, I you, love her. You started painting. I didn't know you were painting. I did. I had a painting business for like 10 years. I was a paint contractor. <laughs> okay. I wasn't supposed to discover something new in this conversation. <laughs> What? That's so incredible. Okay. Yeah, I did like Venetian plaster and all this stuff. And so I had been contracted to do a huge job up in Northern Florida. And I met this woman on the job and she did yoga. And at that time I was teaching like fitness and anything that was, you know, hardcore. I was into running, all of that stuff. Okay. And she dragged me to a yoga class and I didn't love it. I thought it was a little bit silly. It was a hot yoga class. It was Bikram. I was like, I couldn't stop laughing. You know, I had the giggles the whole time. It's like, I was talking to her. I was that like annoying person. So (laughs) mature. Yes, so mature. And I ended up not going back. We we merged our businesses and I had, my body was hurting from all of the working out that I was doing. So I really wish she would go to yoga and she just wouldn't shut up about it. And so I went finally just to shut her off. I said, I'll do whatever you want, but if I don't like it after what you tell me to do, I'm not going back. So she said, you have to go three days a week for a month. I don't care if you hate every class you take. I don't want you to judge it. You just have to stick with it. At the end of the month, if you hate it, I'll never bring it up again and it's fine. So that's what I did. And I think the first week I took five classes and I was totally hooked. I loved it. I loved everything about it. But I did not love the community that I saw there and and the way the people were. I don't even know how to explain it. It just seemed like something was um, off or or not connecting with far as like what you and I are even talking about. You know, like this was like magic. Yoga was magic. And you were just like all of your problems were going to be solved if you do these 26 postures in this order every single day. And it just felt like really? Because that seems a little ridiculous. I'll try, but like, I don't know. So (laughs) I mean, I'll give it a whirl. I'll bite. I'll bite. (laughs) I'm biting. I I am by eating the whole freaking meal, but you know. Did you feel like like when you're in the class that like, you're like, okay, I'm having this experience and I really love it. But like, what, what about like, it made you realize that like, you weren't loving what seemed to be the what was it the consensus about what you guys were there to do like just a little bit more into that how you were like not resonating with that community part yeah because it was I saw nasty people like you're saying like it would be it would literally be people fighting over a spot in the yoga room or you know like just cursing out you know each other as they leave in traffic and someone cuts each other off and it and it I ended up opening a yoga studio because of her. She was like, you really should open a studio. I went to the training. I did the whole thing. And then I saw even more of it because I was there all the time. And, and I felt it even in myself, you know, here I was a yoga teacher practicing several times a day um, and really dedicated to the practice, but still even finding those things within myself and, and knowing that like there had to be more to it. And, and also I I noticed that if I taught a class and I didn't mention all the yoga stuff, I could get people to do it all. So if I stopped using Sanskrit, for example, and I just said, let's do Eagle pose, everybody would do it. But if I said, let's do Garasana, everybody would look at me like, yeah, you do Garasana, I'll I'll watch it, you know? (laughs) And so I, 
I started to just kind of, I had been teaching for a while before, so I, I, I wasn't new to teaching, but I realized if I, if I stripped away, like the stuff that we're supposed to say or su- it, the way it's supposed to be taught, and I made it more relatable to people who were cursing each other out in traffic and, and did find those urges within themselves and were struggling at work and at home and all of these things that I could reach them and I could help them open up to ideas that maybe seemed a little frou-frou for them before. And so it made me feel like a bad yoga teacher because here I was not using Sanskrit, not, you know, having barbecues after classes. Like, you know, we would, my husband's Argentinian. So we would have a Friday class with a huge barbecue after, you know, we would like in the practice and the smell of, you know, sausages is going on in the background, but it got people to come and it got them to really feel like, oh, I can do this. You know, maybe this isn't just for yoga teachers or, or, you know, people who are into that kind of stuff. Maybe it is for me. And so, but, but within the yoga community, I always felt like a bad yoga teacher because I wasn't doing it the way people were doing it then. Well, it's funny too. It sounds like you were, you were changing the way you were teaching in order to connect deeper with your students and like reach them. But that was also coming from a very like, like a me too place. Like, I, yeah, I agree. I don't really <laughs> want yeah. to be, you know, sitting here acting like I'm sitting on a pillow, you know, floating in the air either. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, the, I mean, for me, the practice started out very physical and I think it does for a lot of people. I, I think there's always usually one thing that pulls us into that wellness world, whether you, you connect right away with meditation or right away with writing or right away with a, a physical practice. It's like that one thing that pulls you in. Um, and for me, it was definitely the physical part. I mean, just what I physically felt and what I physically saw, I really liked. And that helped me motivate it to keep going. But it had to be done in a way that felt like it fit into my life and the things I wanted to do. Um, Otherwise, I, I, you just you don't stick with it. You know, you don't you don't ever feel like you're fully involved or committed. So fast forward to now, and you are still continuing this work, but often, well, you still are physically continuing this work, but now you're diving into the world of like creating resources for people to take this this mindset that we're talking about, and um, really, what I would say is a really rare and refreshing, um, healthy way to empower yourself with, um, with support, with the support you need. I think self, I don't know if it's the algorithm and it's just me that's inundated with all of this stuff or if it's everyone, but I find that in an attempt to help everyone feel better, there's just so many resources constantly showing us of what's wrong <laughs> or yeah. what we should be doing or what we need to be doing. Or if we want to feel like this, we should do this. Um, and you've created something with m- the most amount of freedom and autonomy that I've ever witnessed in any resource, any wellness resource. Sorry, I have to say it because it is for wellness. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I really want to tell our listeners about it. So can you can explain a little bit about where this idea came from and what it is and what it's meant to do. Yeah. yeah. So when I was having studios, I'll tell you a little bit about myself just because it'll make a little bit more sense. But my, my, I lost my mom when I was 25 to cancer. And then a few months later, my father-in-law got sick. And then a few months later, my mother-in-law got sick. And then my dad got sick with dementia. And so I spent about 10 years caring for my dad um, and also my in-laws. So by the time I was like about 38, everybody passed like one right after the other. And I really was left feeling like I didn't know how to feel good. You know, my whole adult life had been lived in a way that was filled with anxiety and grief and stress and, and owning business, even though it was a yoga studio, it's stressful, you know? So like all of this stuff was happening and it was right after everyone passed. We, I took a trip with my husband and we were sitting in a, like a small Airbnb in North Carolina. and. I had a few glasses of wine and I, you know, I said to him, I just feel riddled with stress. Like I can feel it. And I, 
no amount of yoga is helping me release it. And and I, I need to, I, if I'm going to continue, I need to release this. I can't keep going like this. It felt, so again, it, did, it also started with the physical for me because I felt it. It like, I could like imagine it in my body. So I started being more open to this idea of maybe I need to look into how I'm feeling, why I'm feeling it. How can I course correct? But I really didn't want Number one, to dig that deep, because I just, I knew where most of it was coming from. You know, it's like, how do I fix it now? How do I start to do things right now that maybe I'm not going to feel hundred percent better, but I will definitely feel something today. And so I read and I looked and I did all of the things, even the things that I felt ridiculous. Most of it's boring. Most of it is, um, ancient, you know, it's, we, you and I are like ancient wisdom, right? Translated into something modern. and and. And you have to read the ancient stuff because it does make a lot of sense, but then you have to translate it down, which takes time and practice and trial and error. And so I did all of it and I really got myself to a place where I still have the ping pong match, obviously, because I think that is part of being human, but I definitely have the tools in place to know how to constantly get myself back to feeling good. So I'm never like, sucked into the bad space or the bad experiences because I, I feel happiness for me is knowing that I have the tools to get myself out and into where I want to be. So I wrote it all down for myself and I did this like manual for myself because I didn't want to forget any of it, all the stuff that worked. And then I was like, I looked at it and thought, oh my God, this could like, this could help a lot of people, you know, because it was so doable and easy. And I was doing it every day with a busy life and a stressful life and all sorts of shit going on. And I was still able to maintain the practice. It just it wasn't overwhelming. Um, and when I did find myself stuck, I could open the manual and say, all oh, right, I have this writing exercise that I did that totally got me out of this last time. So like, let me just sit down and do this. Um, and so that's how it all came up. So I started to kind of put it out there to my, to my students and it was, I started in like a course format um, where I was more present. And I just felt that that was overwhelming to people. It was like their lives were already too busy to then sit down with me for an hour or they didn't want to be in front of Zoom anymore, you know, or it just, it had to be done at a certain time. So, so over the past year, I've just evolved it into audios. They wanted to listen, Like it seemed like anybody could just pop something in for 10 minutes, get what they needed and apply it to their day. So again, you're in this situation where like, no, you haven't fixed all your shit, but you, you feel better as you're fixing it. So you're not waiting for it to be fixed to feel good. You're feeling good as you're working through the stuff. And, and that's what I wanted to, to give to everybody. So it's like a digital library, basically, with 10 minute or less audios where you can go in and some of them are meditations. But again, I've been teaching meditation for a while. I couldn't get people to, to, to say like, I'll become a meditator or be open to meditating. So I was like, how can I do these where they're going to get all the benefits of meditation without feeling like they're meditating? So there's lessons baked into the meditation. So, you know, so you're not sitting there trying to concentrate on your breath. You're, you're learning something that then when we're out of the meditation, you can apply to your life and the rest of your day. Um, that was something that bugged me about yoga and meditation was this idea that when you're sitting on your ass or you're on your mat is the most important part. And then when you're off of it, you go right back to feeling the way you felt before. It's like, no, no, we're supposed to learn in the practice and then apply it when we're moving and living because otherwise what's the point? Mm -hmm. So like who, who cares if you're good at meditation or who cares if you're even good at yoga, if then you're a total, you know, hot mess when you're walking around the rest of the day. Right. Right. So, you know, it's, it's funny because this is it <laughs> for me, something like this at first would feel very begrudging because I'm a very like all or nothing person. I'm like, you know, the idea of like, Oh, you don't just like fix your closet. You pull fucking everything out. Everything pull out. Everything out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and you know, I'm either working out five days a week or not for five months. Um, but this idea that I've really come to know and believe to be true is what you're saying. It's this bit by bit by bit. Like it's the only way 
to like make sustainable, real change for yourself. And have you seen the documentary uh, that's out uh, called Stuts? It's Jonah Hill's documentary on Netflix. Yes, I just watched it. I just, I love him. What you're saying right Uh now, and I did think about you when I watched it, he's so genius. Uh, His, what's his name? Stuts. His name was Stuts, the the therapist. Yeah. Because he was saying at a time where his, he was up and coming and people that were teaching him were like, you're crazy. They need to feel good now. They need to feel good fucking now. Like, you know, you have to tell them what to do. You're not supposed to, like, we're supposed to dig deep and what. It's like, they have to leave with hope. Um, and this is exactly what you're talking about. Like I have goosebumps talking about it. It's like you, yes, there's plenty of shit. There's always going to be for all of us, plenty of stuff and scary things to pull out of the closet if you want to go there. But in order to even feel light enough to take one step, we need to feel good now and do the smallest win and experience that. And this is what you're giving people. Yeah, that's really the idea because it, so much of it comes in the subtle stuff. We're, we're taught to to look for these big, gigantic gains or like this idea that one day I'm going to wake up and I've arrived and I'm happy and everything's falling into place. And it's it's really the subtle things that if you can learn to pay attention, give you that hope because that subtle shift of shifting yourself from not feeling great to shifting back to feeling good or just just the awareness of knowing that you're not the bad mood, that it's just an experience you're having right now. Just that subtle difference changes everything. I think Um, that we completely underestimate these tiny, important things that you're talking about, like a journaling. Like there's so many times where I'll read really helpful journaling prompts and then not actually fucking do it. And it's underestimating how powerful those tiny things can be and completely overestimating the what we will gain out of doing the bigger things, like physically going to a class or working towards this big goal. And it's ironically, it's exactly what I teach in my photo practice. Like it's the same thing. It's like yeah. I'm telling people, like it, it's beautiful. And yes, to all of it, it's beautiful to have these photographs of events and whatever. But like the event doesn't mean anything compared to like all of the little things and the quiet, intimate, tiny moments of your life that got you there. Um, So it's the same conversation. It's just echoed in parallel ways. Yeah. 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 It's a, I just wrote something about, because this is important also, like, you know, it's not about the journey. It's not about the destination. It's the journey. And that always pisses me off that sentence because I want to get to the fucking destination. So like, I, (laughs) I just can't, you know, I'm like, maybe that makes me less spiritual, but I don't understand the point of all the goals and putting it into place if we're never going to actually arrive there. But if the journey is enjoyable, you usually get to the destination way quicker. And if you can appreciate the journey, if you can take note of it, I feel like it, it makes everything fall into place easier. So again, like these subtle steps that you're taking daily, you know, cause it's daily stuff. And that's the, and I think people don't realize how much the action matters, like not just reading something or listening to it, but what action are you taking afterwards? What are you then applying to your life without that person telling you how to do it? How does it feel for you? You know, what do you notice when you're in action? You know, I teach this thing called mindfulness in motion for that same reason, because it felt to me like, okay, great. I'm sitting on my butt and I'm listening to my breath and that's all fine and good. But how do I then apply that mindfulness when I'm, when I have all this stimulation going on around me, how do I ground myself in action? Um, and, and I think that's the most important thing. And I think it's the people, I think that's what people don't realize that's more important. It's not so much that you're sitting. Yes. You're getting a lot of practice in the sitting and you need that because otherwise you don't get it. And you only know by experiencing, right? So you can read it, but if you don't experience it for yourself, you never really know it. So yeah, it's important, but it doesn't have to be done in one specific way at one time. And it, there's, there's so much that you can do and it's always changing and you want to change with it, you know? And, um, and I think people feel nervous about that. Also, they just don't know where to look. You know, you just, you have all this stuff coming at you, but most of the time you're going like, I don't like that person or what they're, you know, that's not the link I'm going to click. So where do I look? 
or it's just you get caught in the loop if you're if you like everyone and you get caught in the loop of intake yes. and can, you can make yourself think that you're benefiting but really you're just intaking but you're not integrating um and it's a really yes. slippery slope it's a very slippery slope right. and it's all so well intentioned um but to really pause and get still with yourself to pause and get still with yourself um and find yourself in the practice um that's that's what we're talking about here so oh the destination we're talking about the destination you were like yeah but i want to get there i want to get there but it's you know it's all of the action that we're taking but really <laughs> talk about an annoying thing to say it's the de- the ultimate destination is that internal destination of what you talked about the second you started talking when you came on it was like happiness which is the ability to know like it's like an invincibility almost it's like yeah i know no matter what i can get myself to this like i am not avoiding life i am not immune to pain i am not never going to get pissed off or make mistakes but i always know that i can pull myself out i'm not going to stay in the sludge um I'll sit there for as long as I need to. And then I know what to do to move and what to do to move. Isn't to like sprint sprint out because you can't, but it's taking those like tiny steps. And so back to this resource that you've made, what is it called? Lessons from a bad yoga teacher. (laughs) (laughs) And how do you envision uh, people using this? Like, because I mean, I can make all these assumptions because I've, uh, been privy to these amazing conversations about what you're doing all along the way. But when you finish creating this and you think about it in the hands of someone that is just going through shit, like don't, yourself, like through that period of time where you were just dealing with loss after loss, after loss, after loss, um, how do you envision this resource being used? Like an open tab on the computer. That, that's how I see it. It's like, it's just always there. And you just, you look at it once a day and you just say, oh yeah, okay, right. That's what I'm going to listen to. Or one is like really, let's say, cause I have, for example, there's a section called survival kit, right? So I put in a, a series of meditations that are, again, they're not meditations. It's like walking yourself through how to understand how to get yourself to feeling better. Even if it's just for a few minutes, because again, it's that subtle shift in knowing that I got myself to feel better in 10 minutes, which means I can just keep reapplying this over and over and over again as I go through my day. Even if I keep going back to not feeling great because my life is is up in the air right now, I, I'm learning how to shift it in the direction I want it to go. So, you know, maybe you're just working with one that like really resonates with you at that time. And for, you know, a month you're listening to the one and then you go, okay, I really got this. Like I've really integrated this. I've seen myself do it now without needing Jenny in my ears. So like, what else do we got going on in there? Or, you know, I'm feeling really anxious today. How do I learn how to move through that? And then you just continue to apply it. So I do see it as just like an open tab on the computer. It's, it's definitely how I use it. Um, it's, it's, it's something I go to all the time daily to say, you know, and you learn how to make decisions and, and based on what you're feeling and what you need, which I think is so important. I was just talking to uh, people don't know how to make decisions and, and we make, we feel like we're making so many during the day, but most of them don't apply to what you actually want or how you actually feel. Um, and so it's a way for you to sit and make a decision. What, what am I, what do I need right now? what's going to help me right now or, or what will really benefit my life now um, and decide which one and use it. I love and there, there are practices and meditations and, and, but nothing where you're feeling overwhelmed or, you know, too through through, or again, if you are feeling really bad, it's not, I'm not asking you to make a huge leap. It, okay. It's a, it's just a little tool that you're going to use and you're going to keep repeating until it's like, Oh, wow. Okay. I got it. Right. And it didn't make me want to, you know, lose my lunch when I was doing it. Like, <laughs> bye. <laughs> I just love that how from every, every angle, it's always directing you back to like this place of like autonomy and empowerment, like true autonomy and true empowerment. Yeah. 
not like a the facade of it. It's like, okay, I have this tool belt of support. Um, and it's not even like this huge commitment of, okay, let me watch this like one hour class or it's okay. Let me get this hit to remind myself of what I already know. Um, yeah. and be able to like really integrate and cement that and take that with me through the day. I love how there's a million different ways that you could use it. Like you can popcorn around or you can, like you said, like focus on there's one audio that you really resonate with and you listen to it every day. And then, yeah. you know, you move on when you're ready to move on. Um, just yeah, like there's that. no water. It's just all the stuff that I use, I put in one place um, so that you can just use it as a reference where you, where you can, you, it's, it's, <laughs> it would be like the definition of self help. Like you're going in for yourself <laughs> and you're saying, what do I need to help? Because that, that is empowerment is, is you doing it. Yes. We all need help yeah. and we all need direction. Yeah. Um, and it needs to come from someone that you feel you can resonate with or you trust. And that was always, you know, you and I have spoken about this, about me using my, my, my four letter words all the time. And, you know, really is the way I use in person, but it's different when you're in person than when you're, you know, just on an audio or you're just doing something like this, where maybe somebody's listening to me and they haven't ever met me in person. Um, and, and I decided to go the direction of, yes, dropping the, you know, the F-bomb like I do in person, because hopefully someone will hear me and go, oh, well, well, like, right. She says, fuck, and she meditates. It's funny. Let me give it a try. <laughs> she says, fuck, while she meditates. <laughs> it's like, maybe, I should, maybe I'll give it a shot. You know? <laughs> yeah. At the end of the day, I'm like, if, if anyone's wildly of, offended by my choice of... <laughs> <laughs> of language then perhaps then it's I'm not for them and I <laughs> yeah and that's great because I think yeah. I think th- this is it's it is such a personal thing that yeah. the stuff really and it and that's what I always tell people too you know it's not something you have to talk about and declare in fact when when you do really feel good like even this for example I didn't think about putting this out into the public for a very long time because it was so personal and it felt like something I shouldn't really be talking about. Like, I didn't want to go preaching around about how awesome I was feeling. I couldn't believe it myself, but I felt like I would be a nut job if I did that. And it would be weird. But then because I was teaching for so long and I had all my clients and students around me, I felt like, how can I not share this? It's, it's, I heard them like I heard, heard myself. And it was like to not tell you that I'm doing this thing that I feel oddly awesome it would be weird Look, I feel guilty for feeling this good um, I feel oddly awesome like I had never experienced that before but I also it's like don't I mean everything in life there's just so many options there's so yeah. much you could learn there's a bajillion things out there and like all you want is someone close to you that you trust that like gets you that you feel like yes like we are on the same wavelength just say Hey, this one. Hey, this. Yeah. this like, exactly. I'm just. I, I mean, I'm a researcher. I'm someone that obsesses over like uh, understanding all of my options. But like, if there's someone that I get that I know gets me, think recommend something. I'm like, thank God, I don't have to spend hours of my life trying to decipher everything and sort out what is for me. Like, this person is just gonna give me that beeline, and that's what this is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's what I wanted for myself. I wish I didn't read all the crappy books I read and did all the weird things. I did. <laughs> you did the legwork. <laughs> I did the legwork so that hopefully you won't have to. So um, you have, um, if anyone is listening to this and they're interested, you actually have a really, really, really cool free writing challenge. Can you tell us a little yeah. bit about it? Cause I'm going to put that link in the show notes because I've done it myself. Yeah. <laughs> I uncovered something myself in the what 10 minutes it took to watch the video. So yeah. Tell yeah. us about it. Yeah, I found these two writing exercises through all of my reading and searching and everything that really, really blew my mind as far as when you feel stuck, like in a in an area of your life where you it's it's like when you feel like you're doing all the right things, but you never get the result you want, or you get it for a little bit, but it never stays. It's like an area where you just feel unsatisfied and frustrated. Um, for me, it was money. It, when I it was always money. It was always around money. I could make it, but I couldn't 
make it like I wanted to make it. It never felt comfortable. It felt like I had to apply an immense amount of effort to get what I wanted. Um, and I did these two writing exercises and basically what they do is just walk you through how to uncover if you have any subconscious beliefs, which most likely you do if it's an area where you're feeling like that, that are directing your, you know, your thoughts, your words, and your actions, which are what create the results in your life. But we don't know that the beliefs are even there. So that's why you feel like you're doing everything right. And you can't figure out why you keep ending up in the same spot. Um, because it is so much, you know, as much as I don't want to get into sounding like a, you know, crazy lady, it is about our vibration and what we are putting out there. And those beliefs vibrate at a frequency that you want to know what you're vibrating at, um, what the beliefs are. So, so they're really simple. It's just you sitting down with yourself for 15 minutes in peace and quiet and uncovering something that can literally change the whole course of your life. It's really that powerful. And I, this is a perfect example of, I wasn't telling anybody about it. Um, and I do retreats in Patagonia, Argentina, and it's a wonderful place to be, but when it rains, it's hard because, you know, you're in the middle of nowhere in the mountains. The idea is to be outside all the time. So we were sitting at home and I said to everybody, would you guys want to try on this writing exercise that like totally changed my whole life? I was so nervous. And they were like, yeah, totally. Let's give it a shot. You know? And so we sat down and we did it and they were blown away. It was like, and it really made me realize how it could apply to anybody. You know, it's, it's, it really could apply to, I'm sure they were all working through different things. They were all had completely different careers and lifestyles and came from different countries and places. And they all were like, they all had holy shit moments. And it was, that woke me up because I was like, okay, Jack, you, you should probably be sharing this with, with other people because it, it, it matters. It matters. It sucks to not understand why. You can't get to where you want to be or why you're always feeling a certain way when you feel like you have all the tools and potential for it to be another way, but you're not getting there. Oh, um, I have everything I need. What the fuck? You know, it's really fuck? funny. In, the, in your, uh, that this writing, this free little writing workshop that you're talking about when I was doing it, I love how you articulated. And as you're reading over what you wrote, there's like a point in time where you'll feel like, ah, like, mm. ah. Like it'll feel like that. And when yeah. I did it, I was like writing and I, I uncovered some, and you know, whether or not you're shocked or you're like, oh my God, like, of course that's what it is. Oh, yeah. I think it's a little bit of both. Yeah. It's both. Yes. I'm like, I spent so much of my life being like, you know, telling people they don't need to be validated for, you know, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, of course you don't need to prove yourself, blah, blah. And then I found, as I'm doing this exercise, I wrote something that led me to write, I just want to feel like people believe in me. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, yeah, what? Like, I was shocked and then also wanted to like hit myself in the head. I'm like, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was so obvious after I read it. I was like, oh my gosh, what was it for you with the money? You said your thing was money. What was your kind of aha moment with that, that you wrote? I... I did it several, I, I worked through several aha moments uh, with this writing exercise because I apparently have very deep money issues. And so I've done it a bunch of times, but my, the one I talked about on the, in the workshop was that it, it's, I don't trust that it will come. And it was bigger than that. It wasn't money. It was like, I don't trust life to work out the way I want it to. And, and that was so big like the uh, some of the other ones that I've gone through have been like right obviously like how did I not realize I was doing that but this one was I felt it in my chest like it was I wrote it and it I went like wow right I mean how am I ever going to really get where I want to get if I don't trust that it's ever coming my way or if I, it, I don't have faith or trust in life that was really my attitude and and seeing it it takes all the power away from it uh, yes, you still have to work at changing it. And now you have this new path that you have to start to build and, and create the new beliefs. And yes, it takes work to move yourself in the direction, but the, the belief now doesn't have so much power because there it is. So you, you hear your thoughts, you listen to your words, you pay attention to your actions and you stop doing the things that support this belief that you don't, you don't want. You realize it doesn't serve you at all. 
<clears throat> yeah, you um, brought it to light. Like once you yeah, look at it, you don't even, that's the beauty of this work and the, this, the simplicity of it and how it's so easy to underestimate. But like, once you bring something like that to light, it, you don't even have to, okay, now I got to roll up my sleeves and get really fucking dirty and, you know, just figure out how to do this. No, like you saw it, like you can, but there's another option. Like you saw it and now like effortlessly you will be able to recognize all of the different areas that'll pop up. It's like the red truck thing. Oh, you think about a red truck and all of a sudden you see red trucks everywhere. They're always, always there. But like only when you're thinking about it, do you see it? Like, it's kind of what I talk about when I talk about the photographs that I take and helping people take their right photographs. It's like when you recognize or when you take a second and you're not taking photos of like just the first day of school milestones and like all the things that you see as like a traditional family, whatever. And you get really clear about what are the moments that really give you life? Like, is it your morning coffee with your feet in the grass? Is it whatever? And you start allowing yourself to take photographs as like a way of like journaling or writing or like whatever it is, you, those moments magnify and like they yeah. pop out at you throughout the day. So it's not about like having to solve the problem or having to take the picture, but like you kind of breathe more life into yourself in the moments that matter most. So like, you know, while there's obviously something to be said for like really getting the tools and like diving deep and whatever, the beauty of what you're offering here is just like this bringing to light awareness and being able to just like live into that. Yeah, I mean, I think the beauty of it and what, what worked for me that I like, I didn't want to go, for example, well, I don't trust life. I don't care why. I don't care why I have that belief. I just want to know how to not have it anymore. I want to know how to move past it. I don't care where it came from. I don't care when it, I learned it. It doesn't matter to me because what matters to me is where I'm heading now. So I needed to know that I have it. But now that I know, where do I go? So. I think that's also what what might be helpful for people about the library, the digital library, is that you don't have to dig that deep if you don't want to. You can just stay at a level that feels like you can incorporate it into your everyday without you being, you know, on the couch crying for a week because you've just dug up something that it, it's doable. It's it's stuff you can integrate, and yet it can shift your life like completely. Um. I, you know, I, we all have different reasons for why we want these things. And we all have different reasons for the ways we're going to apply them and the things that we're looking for. And, and, and this is a great, even starting place, you know, if you then you figure out something about yourself and you go, okay, this, I would like to explore deeper, you know, why, like really, where is this coming from? Great. Then you can take it there if you want to, but, but this is something that can get you into any place that you want to know about yourself and then also how to make the changes in it. And really just, it's about feeling good because that's the whole point. You know, if you're going to, if you're going to dig real deep, but all it's going to do is make you feel like shit for a long time, then what's the point? I mean, the, the idea is to feel good and to enjoy this weird thing that we're doing here and, and, and figure out how to do that, you know? So <laughs> like, I, I, that, that is my new favorite definition of life. This weird thing that we're doing here. <laughs> and nobody knows what we're doing. And nobody yeah. knows what they're doing, you know? And that's also kind of the point. It's like, the more you realize that, I always say like, you know, in your twenties, you, you think you know everything and you don't know that you don't know anything. And then you yeah. get to your thirties and you think you're the, you don't, you go, oh God, I don't know anything, but you feel like everybody else knows everything. <laughs> yeah. And then you get to your forties and you go, oh, like no one knows what the fuck they're doing. So I can just relax about the whole thing. It's like, <laughs> it only took me four decades to figure that out. <laughs> No one actually knows what's going on. And and so I think that is also, it kind of takes the weight off a little bit. You don't have to figure it all out to feel good. You don't have to figure it all out to feel good. Okay. Maybe that's like our takeaway quote. <laughs> <from this novel. laughs> you don't have to figure it all out to feel good. Start feeling up, feeling good now. And oh my gosh, please, nice. watch the Stubbs documentary if you haven't, because like, this is what we're talking oh, yeah. about too. It's yeah. so, so, so good. Um, yeah. Jenny, do you have any closing thoughts, anything that you just, I don't know, anything that we haven't talked about that you want to talk about? Because I feel like this, I don't know, this 
thing that you've made, this library, just feels like one of the most authentic and like real things that I've come across in a really long time. I can get emotional <laughs> because like, I just feel like we've talked so much and I just know that it is the culmination of like everything that you've gone through, but like put through this filter of like, but what is like the most potent? What is the most helpful? What is the the, the real actual things um, that will help someone to feel good? And like that have helped me to feel good. And uh, yeah, do you have anything else to say about it? I think confidence is really the most powerful thing you can have in yourself, you know, self-confidence and, 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 and a connection to something within you that is always there, but you don't realize until you start doing a little bit of work um, and creating a little bit of awareness. And it doesn't take a lot. I think that's the thing I'd love for people to know is it just, it is so, it can take 10 minutes of your day And you can literally start to learn how to live better. It doesn't need to take a lot of research or going to the Himalayas or signing up for some intense situation. It just takes 10 minutes with the intention being there. And and that's it. And you start to build this self-confidence. And and that brings happiness. And that brings a sense of peace. And that stays with you no matter what's going on exterior. So... You know, you work from the inside out rather from the outside in, which is how we tend to work. So you start to learn how to do that. And I think that's really, I think when you can lift yourself up and you, you can start to affect everybody and everything in these subtle ways, but you notice the changes is, is really where you start to go, oh, I'm having a good time. You know, like I'm having a good time, even when I'm not having a good time. It's like, I know that I'm feeling okay because I, I have these tools. I have this self-confidence. Um, and I, I would just love for people to know that it just doesn't take that much. It's just, it just doesn't. Yeah. And so that's why I put it all there for you. <laughs> oh, Jenny, Jenny, Jenny. How can we follow you? Where can we find you? And of course, all of this information will be in the show notes. I'm on um, Instagram. I'm hosted by Jenny. So website hostedbyjenny.com, Instagram at hostedbyjenny. Um, and you can find all my stuff on there, either Instagram or my website. So the retreats that I host, this uh, lessons from a bad yoga teacher. Um, I have a book that's going to be coming out soon. So, yeah. So it's, oh. all, it's all. Yeah. Also, do yourself a favor. No matter what, sign up for Jenny's email list because she sends the best yeah. email. I literally <laughs> laugh out loud like every single time. <laughs> The best email is my favorite mailing list that I'm on. So oh, sign yeah, up. I for- love that. I love that. I yeah, love that's it. on Instagram and on the website. You can sign up for that too. So yes, yes. I would love to have you on my email list. Perfect. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Jenny, thank, thank you, you so much for coming on the show. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. I love seeing you. <laughs> Yay. Um, If you enjoyed this episode and want to get in on actual conversations with me, join the Help Me See podcast private Facebook group. Every Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern time, I'll be hopping on live for Q&A on the latest episode and for free consulting if you need a bit of help thinking about ways to save your memories. Did you get something out of this episode? I really, really, really hope you did. And I would love to hear from you. I'm on a mission to empower you to feel peace knowing that you are not missing your life. One of the best ways that you can support me is leaving a review. And honestly, I'd rather hear about the memory you saved because of this podcast rather than any kind of accolade. Tell me how this podcast has impacted you. And one, I'll probably cry. (laughs) And two, I'd love to give you a shout out on the show. Take a minute and head out to the link in the bio to write a review now on the podcast. <laughs>